Hi everyone. So let's define some chemistry terms today. But before I start, I always recommend students to pause the video, do it themselves, and then come back to see if they got it right or not. That is the true way of knowing if you fully understand this topic. So first we want to identify a molecule and compare that to an ion, right? A molecule is one important component about it is that it is electrically neutral, right? That is the most important part because ions have a charge. Molecules do not. And group of two or more atoms. So atoms would be, okay, let's look at the example of water. So if we had oxygen here, right, oxygen, that would just be the atom, but water has two hydrogens as well. So that makes it a molecule. So a molecule is electrically neutral and has a group of two or more atoms that can be held together by chemical bonds. And then ion, on the other hand, is has a charge because the atom or molecule has lost or gained an electron. An example could be in a plus, this is an ion because it has the plus here indicates that the sodium atom has lost an electron, right? Now moving on the, to the difference between covalent bonding and ionic bonding. So for covalent bonding, the, the species, let's say, or what is involved in covalent bonding is atoms. And for ionic bonding, as the name suggests, ions are involved. So ions are bonded in ionic bonding and for atoms, any atom is bonded there. When uh, at any atom bonds together, it is covalent bonding, right? And electrons are shared in covalent bonding. But in ionic bondings, electrons are transferred from one from one ion to the other, right? So Another key difference between ionic and covalent bonding is that covalent bonding has very low melting point and boiling point. But ionic bonding, they have very strong electrostatic forces of attraction, right? Because the electrons are being transferred from one ion to the other. So it leads to high melting point and boiling point requires more energy to overcome those electrostatic forces of attraction, right? And in ionic bonding, metals and non-metals can be involved, but in covalent bonding, only non-metals. So an example of covalent bonding is, for example, O2, right? Two oxygens, they would share an electron here in between. And then for ionic bonding would be NaCl, so NaCl. And we don't join them together because the electrons are transferred from one to the other. So sodium would um, give its one valence electron to chlorine. And we indicate the brackets that the electron has transferred. And obviously the charge is very important. So we're comparing a molecule and a compound now, and obviously we've talked about a uh, molecule before. If you recall, electrically neutral, right? Two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. And then moving on to the compound, compound two or more elements bonded in a fixed ratio right 
because if you look at um, compounds, there's a red molecule, for example, and then next bonded to it would be a green molecule, for example. So this is a compound. In molecules, it would be it would look something like this. Right? You can find two or more different atoms, but they're not chemically bonded. Yes, the atoms are chemically bonded to each other, but the different ones, they are not. In a compound, the different molecules, so the red and the green, as you can see, they are chemically bonded to each other. So hopefully that makes sense. We're finally moving on to anion versus cation. This, what is the major key thing that you see here? You see uh, ion, right? Ion, we already defined before, ion is atom that lost or gained an electron. Now, there are two types of ions, anion and cation, and we have the the name depends on the charge that is formed from the anion, from the ion and that depends on if the electron is lost or gained right so when an electron is lost then it leads to a positive charge doesn't it and then when an electron is gained it leads to a negative charge and a negative charge a negative charge ion is anion and a positively charged um, and an ion is a cation. So hopefully.